Hello, guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of uh, Unique Items. And no, we're not looking at the Eye of Elitch. This Eye of Elitch is uh, unfortunately bugged. Uh, for some reason or another, somebody edited in Freeze's Target plus 10 on this amulet, which is a uh, poodoo. Leave. Leave, Eye of Elitch. No. Bad. Bad, 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 bad. Gotta make sure I don't show out bugged, broken items. No, we're talking about the Carrion Wind today. Uh, the Carrion Wind is a rather interesting ring uh, that has some rather interesting uses. And, uh, and we're going to go over those uses uh, today. Now, the Carrion Wind is a ring that I've actually used recently in one of my builds uh, for my uh, Wind Druid. So I actually made a shape-shifting wind druid specifically revolving around several items, and the Carrion Wind was one of them. And before this video is out, we will take a look at my Carrion Wind druid, but let's talk about the ring itself first. So right off the bat there, you see it is a level 60 uh, ring, which is relatively high, but not, not like endgame high. It's still uh, going to be a while before you put one on. Um, it does have a 10% chance to cast level 10 Poison Nova, Windstruck, and uh, level 10 Poison Nova is only going to pop out when they beat you. So, you know, if you're not in there getting beat down, um, you're probably not going to have this pop up. But um, it is going to be a nice little 194 to 236 poison damage, um, which unfortunately a lot of the times will get mitigated by a lot of the monster's resistances. We also have an 8% chance to cast level 13 Twister when on striking, which is what I actually built my little my little druid around. And uh, Twister, if you are not a druid and you don't have any synergies um, at level 13, it is 37 to 39 damage, and it spawns uh, three Twisters, and the Twisters stun for 0.4 seconds, uh, which is very, very nice. That little, that little 0.4 second stun on a nice little AoE attack, which hits multiple targets, um, is actually very, very, very effective. Uh, we also have a 9% lifesteal, which does vary between 6 to 9%, uh, which is uh, not a huge variable, but uh, I think a lot of people that would like to use this ring would probably prefer the 9%, especially given the penalties in Hell difficulty, uh, when you would probably start using this item. Um, if you want to know about those uh, lifesteal penalties, you're more than welcome to take a look at my lifesteal video, uh, which I go over. Now, we also have 100 to 160 defense versus missile, which uh, isn't that big of a deal at level 60. Um, it's nice to have, but it's not a game breaker. Uh, we have poison resistance plus 55%, and this actually makes this a relatively nice ring to hold onto if you're going to fight Lilith. So when you do the Ubers, you have to go kill Lilith to get her particular organ, Diablo's Horn, and uh, Lilith has a massive amount of poison damage. I mean, more than probably you've ever seen in your life if you've never fought Lilith. And um, maybe if you fought a rabies druid in PvP. But uh, having this extra 55% poison resistance ring sitting around uh, for you if you need it um, is extraordinarily valuable um, in certain situations, uh, like, for instance, fighting Lilith. Uh, it also has 10% damage tank goes to mana, which is absolutely great for melee and ranged characters um, who would like to get a little bit of extra mana back when they get beat down. Uh, what it does is it essentially provides you with 10% mana um, given whatever physical damage you take. So, for instance, if you take 100 physical damage to your health pool, it will give you 10 mana to your mana pool. You will still take 100 damage, but you will also get 10 mana to your mana pool, which is very nice. Um, and if you wear two of these, you get 20%. Uh, it also has level 21 Poison Creeper charges, which is uh, a relatively high level of Poison Creeper. But Poison Creeper itself doesn't really have the greatest amount of damage. Um, he only really does um, about 90 damage at, uh, at level... 21, which is not really that much. 90 poison damage over four seconds. I mean, you can summon him. He actually will be a little bit of a distraction for you. Um, so if you do put this ring on and you and you summon him, you will notice that the monsters will kind of go out of their way to like chase him and stuff. And, and it does actually kind of help you out a little bit um, that they're chasing him around. As you can see, 90 to 92 damage there. So he has about 300 life. He can take a couple hits. Um, I do not believe you could actually beef him up with uh, with the shouts or anything. I mean, his HP stays pretty static. Um, he is underground, so maybe he can't hear us. <laughs> 
Um, now, we're going to go over to uh, my Hurricane Druid, um, who is utilizing this particular set of rings and equipment, and I'm going to show you how he's built. Um, I may have stripped a little bit of his equipment off, but he should still be in good shape. Um, he is GGM Gilbert. Gilbert, he's named after one of the uh, Hurricanes from a long time ago. Um, if you guys are unaware, it was Hurricane Gilbert. Uh, look it up. It was a pretty bad one. Now, um, when it comes to this particular build, um, the entire purpose of this build is to build the synergies for Twister. And um, so I am utilizing a two carrying winds, uh, a 7% carrying wind, and a 9% carrying wind. And both of them have 8% chance to cast level 13 Twister. I am also utilizing uh, a rain, which has uh, a 5% chance to cast level 15 Twister, and a Windhammer Ogre Mole that is ethereal and zotted with a 33% chance to cast level 22 Twister. So when I go out into to the uh, Etten Moors or, or wherever I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going. Um, I summon up my little army, get myself ready. Um, I go and I recast usually my hurricane in advance, and then transform back into a wolf and start slinging out twisters. And what you will find is I actually stun. A lot. I have uh, hundreds of little twisters that are always coming out. And they're pre stunning everything. Now, do you have to be a druid to utilize the twisters on this ring? No. You don't. Um, and the twisters on this ring are freaking awesome. Um, they can be utilized on any character that procs uh, skills a lot. I find that they're absolutely nice to have on a Zeal Paladin. They're absolutely great to have on a Frenzy Barbarian. They're absolutely great to have on a Kick Assassin. Um, you will find that three little tornadoes that come out and do AoE 0.4 second stuns will be absolutely great to uh, to help you out because think about it yes it's only 0.4 seconds and yes it doesn't last very long but it interrupts the attack of what the monster's doing so if you have multiple monsters in front of you and you're constantly stunning them and interrupting what they're doing they're having a hard time damaging you and it is a extremely defensive mechanic and not only is it an extremely defensive mechanic it is also an extremely offensive mechanic because of the fact that when you are being attacked, blocking, um, recovering, if I'm faster hit recovery effects, whatever it may be, when you are recovering from a, a, a hit, you're not attacking. So having this wide open sort of space in front of you where the monsters are constantly being interrupted means that you are not being constantly interrupted and your damage is being sustained better. Um, and uh, I'm not saying use two of these or anything, but maybe work one of these into your setup so you have some nice little uh, level 13 twisters popping out as you attack. Um, it's not going to be super beneficial to you unless you're attacking very quickly. And um, do keep in mind that you do actually have to hit the target. <laughs> So uh, where can you find uh, one of these carry and wind rings if you are looking for it? So let's go over to silospen.com uh, and uh, we're going to take a look and we're going to see uh, where we can find a carry and wind. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put carry and wind in and we're going to take a look at bosses. And then we're also going to take a look at um, the magic find. So I'm going to pretend we have 150% magic find and uh, we're going to look at probability. And it looks like to me Andoriel and Hell has the best probability out of everyone. Uh, Bale and Nightmare has a second best. And uh, we're looking also at Diablo and Mephisto in Hell difficulty have a pretty good chance. As well as Bale in Hell. So, so Andoriel in Hell, Bale in Nightmare, Bale in Hell, Diablo in Hell, Mephisto in Hell, uh, even Duriel in Hell have pretty good chances. Um... And uh, we also have the Summoner has a pretty good chance in Hill Difficulty, so not bad. Um, and let's take a look at Super Uniques as well. Why not? So we'll take a look at Super Unique Monsters. Super Unique Monsters are always there. Uh, Neelithak, the Summoner, Radamant, Countess, Hephaesto, Cow King, Bone Ash, those are all pretty good chances. Um, 
And then, of course, let's look at regular monsters. And let's sort by uh, probability. And I'm seeing a lot of jail level 1, 2, and 3 from the wraiths and the ghosts. Uh, tower cell level 1 and 2 from the ghosts. Uh, a lot of ghosts. I'm seeing a lot of ghosts here, just in general. It seems like the ghosts have a really high probability of dropping uh, this particular ring um, in Hell Difficulty. Um, in fact, pretty much the entire top of the list is ghosts from every single area in the game. Uh, whether it's ghosts, wraiths, uh, burning souls, uh, dark shapes, um, apparitions, glooms, black souls. Uh, just in general, it looks like pretty much every form of ghostly figure has an extremely high percent chance of dropping the, the carrion wind. I don't. I wonder why that is. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. And if you want to see more um, on my weird druid who uses the carrion wind and, and windhammer ogre maul, and he also uses the storm lash, I do have a video up on him. Uh, it says something along the lines, my weird druid. That's what I call it, my weird druid. He's a weirdo, just like me. No, seriously, that's what my girlfriend calls me. She calls me weirdo. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Uh, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. And um, just a quick call to arms, so to speak. Um, I do also put out other videos besides Diablo 2. Um, I put out a couple horror videos recently. And, uh, you know, if you guys get a chance, hop over to my horror videos and check those out as well. Uh, I promise you, I'm the same guy in both videos. <laughs> anyway, keep watching.